Okay, the first one, they gave you these two equations. They asked you to write down the equations of the asymptotes of F. So it's Y equal to 2 and X equal to 3. The x-intercept of f, you make y zero. Then you solve it, you find x to be equal to one. They did not ask for coordinates, they just said the x-intercept, but please get into the habit of always writing a coordinate. Then the y-intercept of f, it gives you two over three. Coordinate zero and two over three. Then you had to draw the graphs. So I started with the hyperbola. I put in the asymptote y equal to 2. Then the asymptote x equal to 3. I plotted my intercepts. It was at 1 and 0 and 0 and 2 and 2 over 3. Remember to put in the names. And then I joined this one and then I just copied the, the hyperbola at the top. Then the straight line, we didn't have any calculations for us to draw it. But when I look at the straight line equation, it's x plus 2. You remember that plus 2 means that's the y-intercept. Ne? So just in my head, I took the 2 over to find the x-intercept. And that gives me negative 2. So I've got my two points. I plotted them and then I joined them. And there you have your, your graphs. Then at number 5, they 5.5, they asked you to calculate the x-coordinate of the points of intersection of f and g. So when we want to calculate that, then we let them be equal to each other. I told you we don't like a fraction, so we multiply each term with the denominator. Now just something I want you to take note of. If there's the same term on this side as on that side, they can actually just cancel out. So I, I didn't do it immediately. I showed it there. If you didn't see it, you would multiply that one of x minus 3 and it would cancel out. That one would become 2 bracket x minus 3, x bracket x minus 3, and then again 2 bracket x minus 3. But because they're the same, they don't play a role. If you took that 2 over right at the beginning, it would be 2 minus 2 and it's gone. <coughs> then I have 4 equal to x squared minus 3. Get everything on the same side, factorize, then you get your two x answers. x equal to 4 and x equal to negative 1. Now, they did not ask for the y values as well. But I calculated the y values also, just to have everything there because it's not something that's hard. Ne? You just take your x value, substitute it in one of the two equations. I chose the straight line equation because that's the easiest one. So I just said 4 plus 2 is 6, minus 1 plus 2 is 1. So you'll be able to do that if that was asked. Ne? The next question asks for x smaller than 3, calculate the values of x for which the hyperbola is smaller than the straight line. Now, what I mean when they say for x smaller than 3, most of the times it would happen that it's on the one side of the asymptote. Okay. So if you read it from left, left to right, do you see now the hyperbola is at the top? So therefore, it's bigger. Up until the, that point where they intersect, we just calculated it. It's the negative 1. Do you agree? So from negative 1, the straight line is at the top up to the asymptote. So it's from negative 1 up to 3. Neither of them can be included because they're only asking for smaller than, not smaller than or equal to. So I... Um, exclude the negative one and we always exclude the asymptote because it doesn't exist there. So we can't say the straight line is above the hyperbola if the hyperbola isn't even there. And then the last one, there's a very big calculation to work this one out. But it is something that you can read from the graph. They're telling you the line x minus 1. So what I wanted you to notice there is y equal to x minus 1. 
is actually the equation of the axis of symmetry. How do I know that? Because the hyperbola is x minus 3 plus 2, and when we write down the axis of symmetry, it's x minus 3 plus 2, and simplify, and that gives you x minus 1. Now, the point of an axis of symmetry is that it's a reflection on both sides of it. Okay. So they're telling you that this point P is cutting at 1 and 0. In other words, there. So all I did is I used reflection. I said, right, from this asymptote, from 3 to here, it went down how many? And from the asymptote to there, it went down how many? And I did the same thing with the other side. So I'm saying from 3 up to here is 3 less, so it's going to be 3 more. So uh, where am I now? No. It was the point of intersection is 1 and 0. So it's that point, sorry. That point right there. So the 3, for it to become 1 is minus 2. So on the other side it would be 3 plus 2. Therefore it will be 5. Okay? And the y value is 0. From 2, it's 2 down. So going up, it's going to be 2 up. And therefore it's going to be 5 and 4. So you just use the reflection. If you use the calculation, that will be fine as well. Okay, on the next page, we've got question six. What they're telling us there is that we have the graphs of f of x, which is negative, bracket x minus 3 squared plus 25, and g of x, which is 2, and then the base is a half to the power of x plus 1 minus 4. Let's just look at the equation of the parabola. What do I get from that equation? The turning point. So I've got the coordinates of D. And when I have the turning point, I also have the axis of symmetry. Ne? Just to keep that in mind. And I can factorize that to get the, the x-intercepts, which will be A and C. Do you agree with that? Yes? No? Yes? Okay. I can also multiply that thing out to ABC form. Okay. And when I've done that, I have the C value. And C value is also the y-intercept. So I also have E. So just with the parabola, with the equation in that format, I have a, I can get A, I can get C, I can get E, I can get D. So I can get everything there. Looking at the exponential function, do you agree that the shape fits the equation? Because the base is a half. So it's going to be a decreasing graph. I can find the value of B. It's the y-intercept. Right. And do you see that it's x? this one has an x-intercept? They don't always have an x-intercept, the, the exponential functions. But it's the same intercept as A. So I can get it either way. Okay, so I have everything there. So the first question they ask is the asymptote, the equation of the asymptote of G. You can do that, now. Okay, it's the exponential function. It only has one asymptote. Write down the coordinates of D. You can do that. The range of F, that's the parabola. I hope you can do the range, is the y value. So what's the smallest y value? What's the biggest y value? Then they're asking you for the length of EB. The length of EB. Now, this is not the same as the sum that we did yesterday. The sum that we did yesterday, there was a line drawn, and they asked what can the maximum length of that one be? This is not it. Do you remember I just said we can find E? We can find the value of E. We can find the value of B. And if you have those two values, you can subtract them and get the length. How do you find E? It's the y-intercept of the parabola. How do you find B? It's the y-intercept of the exponential function. Easy. You can get it. Okay. Right. Then they ask for which values of x will the graph of f decrease. Do you know where it's decreasing? From d to the right. So it's going to be 
read the question the values of x so it's going to be your x value of your turning point up to infinity it's going to decrease okay then the average gradient we've done that you know that normal gradient they just call it average because it's not a straight line and then they say you find graph t by reflecting g in the x axis so it's gonna you don't even have to do remember i told you when you reflect something in the x axis you put a negative in front of y you don't even have to do that because you have the graph there reflecting in the x axis just means it's going to swap you can draw it in so if this asymptote is negative 4 what do you think the reflected asymptote will be 4 and then the graph will just look like that so can I give the range yes from negative infinity up to asymptote okay now look there's one that's a little bit funny there again if P, we don't have a graph P, but P is F of X plus 2. So it's the same as the parabola plus 2. What will that plus 2 do? It will move it up to units. So it's only going to influence your Q. Okay. So your Q is at this stage. The Q value is 25. Okay? So it will just be... 27. Now they're asking you to write down the new coordinates of the turning point. So you see the X didn't change. It's only the Y, the Q value that changes. Okay? Then determine the value of K for which a straight line is a tangent to F. Okay? <laughs> what is a tangent? A line that touches it. No. Okay, so this graph is 2X plus K. So all we, all I want you, no, I don't want to tell you how to do it. Um, let's see if you can figure out a plan for that one. Okay. Well, good. Just that one for me. Yes, I will take in your marks now. Thank you. Um, okay, so we've got the whole period to do this. So your homework will be the next question five. The next so question six, it's this parabola and exponential. Then it's two number patterns again. You skip them. It's question five just on the next page. It's again, it's a hyperbola and exponential. You've seen how quickly those go. Just to remind you, I've said this before, at 5.4, oh, 5.1, where they say determine f of negative three, that negative three is in the place of x. Now we're used to it as being f of x. Now it's f of negative three. That means you have to put the negative three into the place of x. If they said f of x equal to negative 3, it means you have to make y negative 3. You understand that? Yes. Okay. So you can start with that now. Question 6 and question 5.